Hi guys, Dane here, and today we are going to get started on my November book haul. I've actually already hauled something yesterday, so we're going to cut to the footage of that. Hello, I went to a charity shop today. Basically, I have this weekly anxiety meetings I've been going to. I actually only have one more left to go to next week. Um, but they take a lot out of me emotionally and leave me like super tired and super drained. So, um, yeah, I was supposed to be um, meeting my other half later and uh, we're too tired. She's too tired as well, so. Um, but I did decide to treat myself by nipping into the charity shop. So I'll show you these because these are some vinyls. So this is the Wurzels, the Combine Harvester, brand new key, and the Blackbird. It's just a single. Uh, it's like a novelty song by a band from Somerset. Somerset! That's kind of what it sounds like when you say Somerset with a Somerset accent, I guess. Here we've got an album, Mozart Symphonies 40 and 41, and uh, then Pure Soft Metal, which has got like, it's got like A Kind of Magic by Queen, I Just Died in Your Arms by Cutting Crew, Summer of 69 by Brian Adams, what else we got? Take My Breath Away by Berlin. Yeah, oh and True by Spandau, Spandau Ballet. Those are the good songs in this, so you can imagine what the bad songs are like. And then I've got these books. So i got Foundation by Isaac Asimov. I've been looking for this for ages. This is the start of like his most well-known series. And um, yeah, I finally saw it in a charity shop, so I knew I'd pick it up. This is The Mystery of Three Quarters by Sophie Hanna. So this is like a new Hercule Poirot story. Like uh, Sophie Hanna's written a few of them, actually. I, and I did read one of her other ones, and it was all right. Um, and it's all sanctioned by the Agatha Christie estate and stuff. So... Yeah, I saw that and I wanted, that was like, both of those were already on my wish list, you know. And then I picked this up, Love in a Cold Climate. This is the Folio Society edition uh, by, who's this by? Nancy Mitford. And this was £2.50 and I reckon I can probably sell this on for £10. So that's basically why I, why I bought this, you know. Folio Society books always sell okay. And then I've got this and I've already seen what this is. Because it's on the printing and like packaging instructions or whatever. This is... Laura Putnam, Workplace Wellness That Works, 10 Steps to Infuse Wellbeing and Vitality into Any Organisation. So this is another one of the books that I have to read and do like sort of spark note style summaries on. So I will be getting to that shortly. All right. Okay, I've had some parcels come in the post. Very exciting. Uh, this is, yeah, they're all from World of Books and they've sent me them all in different ones, which is, you know, terrible for the environment, but hey ho. So here we have The Hunger Games Catching Fire. So this is the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy. I have the third book over there as well and I've already read the first one. So I basically ordered this because I've been looking everywhere, right? I've been looking in every charity shop all the time for a copy of that one book and I couldn't find it so I eventually caved and ordered it. And then I saw it in a charity shop yesterday or the day before, well like after I'd ordered it but before it had arrived. So it's always the way. This is Dawn by Eli Weisel. So, um, this is like the follow-up to uh, Nights, and I believe I was going to be buddy reading this with somebody, but I can't remember to who. I think it might have been Alex Black, so I'm going to message her. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting to that one, even though it is obviously a horrific subject, but it, it's also fascinating. Okay, here we have a J.G. Ballard, High Rise, and um, basically this book, uh, somebody gave this a, a copy of this to my other half for uh, her birthday, and I read the blurb and I was like, that sounds really cool. And then I read the introduction just while she was in the shower and stuff. And I was really fascinated by what I read. So I just wanted to get this book. It's basically um, like a post-apocalyptic novel set in a high-rise flat, basically. Within the concealing walls of an elegant 40-story tower block, the affluent tenants are hell-bent on an orgy of destruction. Cocktail parties degenerate into marauding attacks on enemy floors, and the once luxurious amenities become an arena for riots and technological mayhem. Very cool. Yeah, and there's a movie of it as well, which I will watch after reading it, I guess. I did see a spoiler for it, though, and it's a massive spoiler. And normally, like, normally I don't mind about them too much, but this one's actually kind of annoying. I wish I could go back and unsee it. And here we have Aliens by Alan Dean Foster. So obviously this is the sequel to Alien. It's the novelization of the second Alien movie. And I think I was going to be supposed to be buddy reading this with somebody, too. And I, again, for the life of me, I can't remember who. It might be Graham Quigley? I don't know. I just... See, what I did is I made the mistake of noting down, get this for Buddy Reed. And didn't know down who the Buddy Reed was with. So, if you're watching and you would like to Buddy Reed these with me, let me know. Hey, I have some parcels. I think, I'm, I think they're both workbooks, actually. 
So here we have the healthy workplace nudge, how healthy people, culture and buildings lead to high performance by Rex Miller, Philip Williams and Dr. Michael O'Neill. And here we have bring your human to work, 10 surefire ways to design a workplace that's good for people, great for business and just might change the world by Erica Keswin. So these are both books that I've got because I do these like spark note style reviews slash summaries for a client. So very interesting. Not really looking forward to reading them, but hey ho. Hi guys, okay, so I've got a couple more things I want to show you. So this is Pocket Painters, Cezanne. This is published by, who is it published by? Pavilion Books Limited. And it's just a collection of Cezanne's paintings, basically. Uh, he's French. I'm trying to learn French and understand French culture a bit more. So it seemed like Cezanne would be a good place to start. I also got over here, which apparently I already have and I didn't realise. This is the best of Paul Robeson on vinyl. So that's going to be in my eBay store, link below. There's also lots of like secondhand books and stuff there if you want to take a look. And then I also picked up, um, what's it called? The Infamous by Mob Deep for 99p on vinyl. So that was pretty cool, but I've already put it away up there. Yeah. Hello, people of YouTube. I have this book. I picked this up from the book exchange at Tesco. A history, oh my God. A history of the world in 21 women, Jenny Murray. And uh, yeah, I had a look inside. So yeah, it's got a few people who I'm particularly interested in. So it's got like Frida Kahlo in here, for example, Joan of Arc, um, Catherine the Great. And then like people I don't really know about. Then we've got like uh, Mary, Mary Curie, Marie Curie, I can't even pronounce things, I'm tired. Coco Chanel, Toni Morrison and Margaret Atwood as well, which I'm like, yes. Hillary Clinton's in here, like Benazir Bhutto, uh, Bhutto, I don't know how to pronounce it. She was assassinated, wasn't she? That was fucked up. Angela Merkel as well. So yeah, there are some pretty cool, like, I have a lot of respect for Merkel. I mean, to be fair, I don't really know her uh, policies and stuff too much, but, uh, you know, cool, good. I also have here, this is from a box of stories, and um, they've sent me this subscription box, and it has a bunch of books. I think it's fiction and non-fiction in but I'm going to do a dedicated unboxing and also written blog review for this thing. So um, I shall let you know what I make of it. I think it's also based on like my personal reading tastes as well. And you can get um, you can get ones that are like purely fiction or ones that are fiction and non-fiction mix. So mine is fiction and non-fiction. So yeah, link below to the video for this because it should be out by the time you see this. No way. Okay, so this is the first one I've seen here. Mark Seaman. Saboteur, the untold story of SOE's youngest agent at the heart of the French resistance. Now, I believe one uh, SOE's special orders executives or something. I don't know. It'll say somewhere. Special operations executive. Um, so, yeah, it says here. Um, uh, well, I watched a thing on Netflix, a documentary about SOE's and the training that they used to go through. And it was kind of phenomenal. So, basically, he's like working undercover. But also, obviously, at the heart of the French resistance. And I'm currently... To learn French, so that's pretty cool as well. And I would just love war stuff, so that, that right away, I'm looking forward to that. That's a good start. Exile by James Swallow, by the author of Nomad. Okay, so oh, it's got a quote by Wilbur Smith. Actually, it's got loads of quotes. That's too many quotes to go through. I'm not going through all those. Let's have a look at the blurb. Uh, you men of power, see this face and know who and what it is that is coming to punish you. I will show you something. You will see. A vicious Serbian gang whose profits come from fake nuclear weapons. A disgraced Russian general with access to the real thing. A vengeful Somali warlord with a cause for which he'd let the world burn. Only one man, Mark Dane, sees what's coming. And even he might not be able to prevent it. See, I'm kind of like, I don't know how much the re or what research uh, they, you know, put into the, into the boxes before they send them. But, like, that's Mark Dane. This, like, I've talked um, about learning French and stuff, so that's very cool as well. Two more anyway, so we've got CJ Carver here, and this is Spare Me the Truth. I've heard of this author, but I don't know where from or why. And here we have Rory Clements. No, okay, okay, there's another war one. Corpus, 1936, the war has already begun. And it's funny, actually, it has for fans of Robert Harris, because I've not read Robert Harris, but he is on my TBR with a book set in Germany, you know? So the blurb here. 1936, Europe is in turmoil. The Nazis are on the march. In Russia, Stalin has unleashed his great terror. Spain has erupted in civil war. In Berlin, a young Englishwoman evades the Gestapo to deliver vital papers to a Jewish scientist. Within weeks, she is found dead, a silver syringe clutching her fingers. In an exclusive London club, a conspiracy is launched that threatens the very heart of government. 
when a society couple when a society couple with fascist leanings are found brutally murdered a maverick cambridge professor is drawn into a world of espionage he knows only from history books the deeper thomas wilde delves the more he finds to link the murders to the girl with a silver syringe and even more worryingly to the scandal surrounding king edward the eighth and his mistress well wallace simpson Hey, that sounds awesome as well. Hello! Okay, so I've got this from Wordery. I think this might be a worky book. We will see. Uh, yes. C Great Mondays. How to redesign a company culture employees love by Josh Levine. And this is another one where this client... I, I basically review books and... Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's about it. I actually, so I tend to go through and like I'll sort of skim read through it and find some of the most important bits. Uh, so like for example there, there was a bit about uh, creating your company's obituary. It actually looks pretty good. I might I might read this one in full. Um, just because I like this like, quirky design. It's pink as well and pink's good. So yeah, we have that. And then we have what is an early Christmas present. I mean, I guess I'm allowed to open it now because it's here. Basically... My mum asked me what I wanted for Christmas and like I have my like massive list of books but also there are a couple of like little box sets that I want <laughs> and so this was one of the ones that I sent to her and so she's got me this and so I'm just going to open it now because I guess it's an early Christmas present you know ho 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 it's November. This is also, by the way, going to totally screw up my attempt to cut down my number of currently reading books. Because there are like 30 books in this. So this is Ladybird Tales, my Once Upon a Time library. So these are all little fairy tales, basically, in Ladybird Books editions. So we've got uh, Beauty... Well, so I'll read them all out, actually. Might as well. We've got... What should I show you? No, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take it out of the box. It says, this stunning collection of Ladybird tales is based on Ladybird's original best-selling well-loved tales series with stories by Vera Southgate and beautiful detailed illustrations to capture the hearts of a new generation of readers. Children have always loved these stories and sharing them together is an experience to treasure. I, <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of nice in that respect that my mum got me this, but I'm 30 years old. But I feel like this is an important little part of my collection, you know? Or I w So I will read all of these as well. What I'll do, as I do with, with all the box sets I get, to be honest, I'll read them all, and then I do a, like, a little wrap-up video where I rank them from least favourite to favourite. So, um... Oh yeah, the RRP on this is £119.76, but she didn't spend that much, because it's one of those where these have been like mass-produced, so you can get them pretty cheap, I think. Anyway, okay, we're going to take the books out of the box. Oh. This is going to take me ages on Goodreads just to mark all of them as currently reading. So here we have the empty box. I'll also have to store these in alphabetical order, otherwise it'll do my head in. So these are all by... who? What was her name? These are all by... Vera Southgate, okay? So I'm just going to show you the covers and read them out to you. So oh, they're quite heavy, actually. Here we go. We have The Ugly Duckling... Oh, they're so cute. Look at them. So I'm probably going to pick one of these up as like a palette cleanser. One or two of them, maybe. It's palette cleansers in between each longer book that I read, you know. So we have The Ugly Duckling. The Princess and the Pea. The Little Red Hen. Chicken Lickin'. The Princess and the Frog. Dick Whittington. The Magic Porridge Pot. The Three Billy Goats Gruff. Uh, what else we got? Of course, Jack and the Beanstalk. Puss in Boots. The Elves and the Shoemaker. Sleeping Beauty. Rumpelstiltskin. And Rapunzel. The Gingerbread Man. And in this, this last little stuff. They are, they have got some weight to them, you know. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The Three Little Pigs. Little Red Riding Hood. Hansel and Gretel. The Big Pancake. The one that I've literally never heard of. Cinderella. 
Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, The Enormous Turnip, and Beauty and the Beast, La Belle et la Bête. So they've all got these really cute little illustrations in, and obviously they tell the stories. So I'm quite excited to get to these. I think, I think actually thinking about it, my plan with these is actually going to help to boost my morale trying to trim down my currently reading list. So although this is going to put me up to like 150 or something, my rule is going to be every time I finish another book, I read one of these. So like that counts for my main book, but also for my bedtime book as well. So I have them as like my little palate cleansers. But also it will kind of, although my currently reading number will be higher, I'll be reducing it twice as quickly. I'm doing a really bad job of justifying this to myself, aren't I? But they're, they're, they're lovely, they're beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go hands free to do the outro on this. But as always, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.